Why, hello there. Today we are going to be talking about simplified radicals that contain variable terms. Now, I will be upfront with you. Today I will be using the factor tree method for simplifying certain radicals that have constant terms in them. So if you are unfamiliar with that method, I do implore you to go check out the education video about simplifying radicals using the factor tree method. If you are all set with that, then I do encourage you to follow along. Let's get going. We'll start off simple with just a variable term in here. To simplify a radical that contains a variable, we must have or produce a variable term that has an even power. Because when you take the square root of an even powered variable, the answer is equal to the variable raised to half of whatever the even power is. Now, if this is the case, it should be pretty obvious why we need an even power. Because if you divide an odd number by 2, you produce a decimal value. Something that we really don't want to have here. Let's use x to the 11th as a nice example for us. Now remember, we can't do anything with an odd power like 11, so we're going to have to rewrite the radicand as the product of an even and an odd power. In particular here, let's use x to the 10th times x. That's the easiest pair of numbers that are going to multiply together to give us x to the 11th. Now, even powers of x like x to the 10th have nice square roots, so we can get rid of that in the radicand. What's the square root? Well, you take the power of x and divide it by 2, so x to the 5th, right? We've used that up, so we'll cross it off, and the only thing left in our radical is x. Final answer, x to the 5th times radical x. Our next example will be 20x to the 7th. Now, in this case, we're going to have to do two things. Number one, got to take care of that odd power of x. And number two, we have to take care of that 20. For this, we will employ the factor tree method. 20 can be written as the product of 4 times 5. 5 is prime. And 4 is the product of 2 times 2. Both of those are prime as well. Now, we're going to rewrite our radical. Starting with the 20, we're going to have 5 times 2 times 2. And then with the x to the 7th, we'll just rewrite that as x to the 6th times x. You might notice a theme here with these variable terms. Notice I have a pair of 2's. I'm going to put that on the outside. And since I have an even power of x, I can also take the square root of that as well. Okay? Moving on, we're going to rewrite this as 2, cross off that pair, x to the th third, because 6 divided by 2 is 3, cross that off. What's left in the radical? Well, 5 and x. So our final answer is going to be 2x cubed times the square root of 5x. Well, all right. Now our last example here, the square root of 63x to the 13th, y to the 27th, contains a constant and two variable terms, both of which we are going to have to contend with because both powers are odd, right? So we'll break down 63 first as the product of 9 times 7, 7 being prime, and 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. We will then rewrite our radical as the square root of 7 times 3 times 3, for the 63, and then we're just going to subtract 1 from each of our powers. So we're going to have x to the 12th times x, and then y to the 26th times y, right? If you want to rewrite your variable terms, just write it as 1 minus the thing times x. We have a pair of 3's, which we will put outside. We have a 12 that we will put outside and a 26 as well. Remember, we're going to cut those in half. So when we go to rewrite this new radical, we are going to have 3 for the pair of 3's, cross those out, x to the 6th, half of 12, y to the 13th, half of 26, there we go, and then what's left in our radical, 7, x, and y. Our final answer, 3x to the 6th, y to the 13th, times the square root of 7xy. Woo! And those are our examples. Now, I realize I probably wasn't as clear as I should have been about what to do with the variables with odd powers, but allow me to clarify, if I may, exactly what my thought process was. When you have a radical that contains variables with odd powers, you must rewrite those variables as the product of an even and an odd power. The easiest thing for you to do is to rewrite your variable as whatever your variable is, times the variable raised to one less than the power that it is. So with x to the 11th, we did x to the 10th. Very, very simple. In this way, you can take the square root of the even power and then just leave the regular variable behind. Takes a lot of guesswork out of it.
So, if you need to, feel free to watch this video again and try to get a better understanding of what exactly was done there. If you feel comfortable, then go out and tackle the world, my friends. It is your oyster. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.